Ah. <laughs> ah. This thing called marriage. <laughs> you know, uh, oftentimes I've been asked this question and I just, you know, I just run through it. Oh, blah, 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 blah. you know, but today I, I would respond as I know it. This thing called marriage has two sides to it. Depends on how you go about it. But to answer your question, I would say that um, yes, it gets lonely. I would not say that I feel unfortunate not being married. No, because I could have been married and God forbid I could have been divorced. But of, I wanted to get married in my early 30s I'm in my early 40s now, so I'd like to say that I'm 10 years behind. It doesn't make me happy, but I'm not sad about it. Um, so I would not say that I am fulfilled or not having a family now, no. And I do not really think that anyone who's not married won't set out to be unmarried. People see things, they hear things, they have their fears, you know. Um, so I would not say that um, I'm fulfilled. But at the same time, I would say that I, I'm happy, that I'm in good health. I'm happy that I don't have someone in my life, you know, stressing me out and making me depressed. The work I do is emotional. The work I do requires the best of me. So I would say that I am happy living my best life, you know, until um, I take the big step, which I still believe in. But having said that, the world is changing, the world is evolving. And um, you would agree with me, English language, before they misquote me again, you would agree with me that marriage is becoming overrated. Oh, yes, it is. Um, because we are beginning as a people to, I dare to say, evolve out of or the tenets or ordinances or what should guide marriage. The world is really evolving. Things are changing. You know, um, if, you, if you look at the generations of that of our parents and our parents and even now, you find that the divorce rate is, is hitting the roofs. Why? Evolution. Evolution. And people are becoming self-aware. So I would say that really, you know, what one should look out for in marriage is someone who you agree on more things on. You can't agree on everything. But if you agree on more things, you people stand a very good chance. Because no matter how much you love yourselves, if you argue over everything, the, the fights and the argument and the uneasy moment and the tension would stifle and eat up the love that you people have like a canker one. And that's why they say love is not enough. So you have to also look at other areas of your lives. And that is why for me, it, it's, it's sort of easier when you're dealing or dating your friend. Um, so for me, marriage is not a joke. I just told you how I grew up. My parents, conflict resolution on point. You know, love on point. Discipline, putting God as the head of the home on point. So um, I might have grown up looking to replicate what I enjoyed, you know, what I had seen growing up. But having said all of this, I believe in marriage. Having said all of this, it's something that I want to do. I don't want to be alone. I say this all the time. The Bible says that it is not good for man to be alone. I do not want to be alone, but I also do not want to get divorced. I do not want to stress someone's daughter out. Neither do I want someone to come into my life and make me depressed. No, both of us must have a common goal, which is to resolve to make it work. And it's not enough to say that. If you don't have a common goal, you know, um, you know your intentions and your, your motives are never in sync. You get what I'm trying to say? So you have a lot of, you have high failure rates in marriages now because of enculturation and evolution, you know. Um, but some people are making it work because their ideologies align. And uh, I'm hoping that I can get that lucky. And if I feel that I am that lucky, I would, 
or I'll do the right thing. I mean, my parents did it. I want my, my kids to do it. Uh, it's, it's right. But if we keep going the way we're going, um, accepting evolution and the world changing, but we're not accepting to look deep within ourselves and not lose ourselves. In the next 20 years, people will not be discussing marriage. Trust me. Love is selfless. Love is forgiving. Love is tolerant. Love never gives up. Love never compares. Love, if it is true, is always fresh and never dies. Love is life, for love is deep. You know, for me, I, I, I would say that my growing up had different phases to it. You know, I, I have, I, there's a, there's, a, there's, 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 there's a part of my childhood that comes with a lot of joy and excitement as I relieve those beautiful moments, especially, you know, growing up in the 80s. And, but the 90s wasn't funny, you know. Um, so, um, I would not say that I was born with a silver spoon. I would say that I was born with no spoon at all. If that makes any sense. Um, boy, <laughs> I said it's no hose bad, yeah? So, yeah, we do this. Before I became a teenager, life was good. You know, life was exciting and everything was, was rosy, I would say. But my, my late teens weren't, weren't quite, um, quite as smooth. quite as smooth, you know. <laughs> you know, I drove down to the uncompleted building that I, I lived in with, with, my, with my parents between, in the late 90s actually. I drove down there 20 years later with a colleague of mine. Uh, as much as my colleague, my male colleague, if he's watching this now, he would know. As much as he was excited, you know, how far God has brought us and, you know, how well we're, you know, seemingly doing. I wasn't excited, man. I, I was looking at that. And where it is, 20 years after, and how bad that place looks now. And I started asking myself, how did we get to that point in 1997? How bad was it, man? How, how bad was it? Because even now, I wouldn't wish my, my enemy to live there. I mean, you know, I, I woke up to millipedes on the wall. I woke up to soldier ants. I, it was an uncompleted building. A forest. I know then, you know, my father, my parents were still alive at the time. And, you know, they had their projections. Oh, in the next 10 years, or oh, in the next 20 years, oh, it would have been developed. And I went there in 2017 with a friend because we, 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 had, we had filmed close to that area. And then I just said, hey, guy, sure, you know, say, we've been live here. 
when you know when i <laughs> and he said oh let's drive down i said oh okay and we drove down he could relate he told me you know that life wasn't all so great with him growing up and what he's still going through but i kept asking myself 20 years down the line i cannot even wish this on my enemy how bad was it in the 90s so I wouldn't say um, growing up was rosy financially. No, it wasn't. But, but, but that got me thinking. That, has, that made me determined to make it in life. <laughs> and thank God we're here. And we're still going somewhere. Um, but in the midst of all of that, I grew up in a home with a lot of value. My parents preached respect, self-esteem, hard work, prayers, focus, especially my mom. Focus, focus, focus a lot. Maybe because of the circumstances we found ourselves in. But ultimately, there was a lot of love. Um, I think I got my acting chops from my mom. My mom was a comedian, you know. <laughs> so she would always come up with things to make us laugh. So, in, in all of that lack, if you want to put it that way, there was so much love. And that's the kind of home that I'm looking to have. It wasn't like my parents didn't have the arguments, but their conflict resolution skill is something that I have not seen even now in my 40s. You know, how people just have their disagreements and then they understand what's most important, which was the family and the two boys that they had, my, my Myself and my younger brother David, you know, the love was just so much that you almost, if, if you if you had if you put my younger brother here, he would not understand all of this pain, because you know, the boy was choked up with so much love, so he didn't even know what was going on. So I think my parents mastered that, you know, and it helped suppress all of that. But when we got into the new millennium. I had gotten into the, into the labor force and things sort of started looking good. So I would say that I'm a typical product of from, from grass to grace. So I, I was born with no spoon, but I have been able with dedication, focus, hard work, God's favor and grace upon my life to build different kinds of spoons for myself from wooden to, to, to silver, from silver to, to, to go in and then we're looking at platinum and diamond now <laughs> but i keep working it, it, it's something really personal like i said it's no holes barred so i'm just going to put it out there so that's it it wasn't particularly easy you know i i was the errand boy i would carry water on my head heavy containers of water you know and, and walk my house you know I was, I was my mother's, you know, sales boy. I would, <laughs> I would go, to, you know, we couldn't afford the house help, you know. Uh, so I would travel miles, you know, to, to fetch water. I, I, I did all of that. You know, there, there was one time I came back home and our building had been marked for demolition. <laughs> Listen, I don't know. I don't know how how people know God, yeah, but I, I can tell you that I have encountered God. When 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 you sincerely pray, He answers. I got home and the building had been marked for demolition. As you want, it, it wasn't like they were just talking because, you know, the ghetto area where we were living at the time was split into two. So you had the side and then you had the expressway and then you had the other side. So the other people on the other side of the road, their building had already been demolished because I wasn't around for about five days. So they were supposed to come back the other day, sorry, the next week, and my mom had retired. And the only money I had on me would not even be enough to rent um, a truck some of us. I knelt down and 
for the first time, you know, I used to read in books. As a growing child, I loved literature a lot. So I used to read that people cried hot tears. I didn't know what, what it was. But that day, I, I, I felt that my tears could burn my T-shirt. Because I was praying and I was crying. My brother was very young, man, and my mom, my mom had just retired. It was just me. And my father had just died. <laughs> it was a lot. I remember my prayer that, that afternoon when I was holding the demolition, demolition notice. I said, Heavenly Father, Please, please. We have no funds to move to a different place. If not for my sake, for the sake of my mother who's clergy. And for the sake of my younger brother who, who doesn't even understand what we're going through, you know. I was, I was crying and I was praying. Ugh. <laughs> it wasn't easy, man. You see, so when I see young people distracted, thank you. When I see young people distracted and not focused, I go like, I don't know what you guys are doing. Because I know that God answers prayers and, and hard work pays. Because I'm a living example. I'm a living testimony. It was rough, man. It was rough. It was rough. Yeah. A lot of privileges I, I did not enjoy growing up because we, we clearly could not afford it, you know. Uh, but that made me resolve to be successful. Because honestly, poverty does not look good on anyone. You know, <laughs> you know I tell my friends that sometimes, like, you know, I, I cannot believe that I stand six foot three inches tall because I fetched water to a point where my, I stopped growing and I had, like, I had bald head here. <laughs> and my friends were making just of me that you've gone bald. And my mom said, no, it's because you're carrying that bath of water. When you stop, your hair would grow. It got to a point where I had to save to start calling, you know, these Malam people that carry water here to help me do it. And then I got to a point where I had to save to buy a wheelbarrow, a lot of other things. But above all of that, I kept praying that my mom would not fall sick. I kept praying that something heavier than what our financial capabilities could handle do not befall us because I didn't have anyone to run to. So I would say growing up was not rosy, but growing up has been quite inspirational. Because in all of that, I just never believed that I would fail. Hmm? <laughs> Thank you. Don't mind me. <laughs> Should I be honest? <laughs> I ask if I can be honest because... Um, what I have to say would be if we're more honest with ourselves, I think more marriages would never had happened and the ones that eventually happened would have lasted. A lot of people get into this for the wrong reasons. Sometimes you could get into it for the right reason and then your pair would be in there with you for the wrong reasons. That's living in hell, man. So as much as... Um, you as an Hollywood entrepreneur is marrying someone outside the business, or both of you, I, mean, I actually think that the, the people in the business should get it right. Because you know about the woman's, you, you know everything that's going on with her. And then you know about the man's finances, his highs and lows and the struggles. So you make up your mind what you want to deal with. So in my opinion, Nollywood marriages should, should succeed, it should excel. If I marry someone, oftentimes they ask me, can you marry an actress? I say, Yes. 10, 15 years ago, I didn't have that notion. Okay? But I have... I have met a few actresses that have blown my mind. I have met a few actresses in Nollywood with exemplary family values. 
I don't have to name names. You, you know them. You see what's happening. Okay, so, and I tell people, uh, no one is from Nollywood. Nollywood is just our workplace. I'm from Onewi, Anambra State. And then this actress is probably from, you know, Kaduna or from Abuja or from Delta State or from Imo State. That's where she's from. And then if you pry further, you'll find that she's from a home. Whether a good home or a bad home, but she's not from Nollywood. So, no one is from Nollywood. I can understand that a lot of people have gotten things wrong and a lot is just like what happens in other sectors, you know, but ours is, is in people's faces because it's show business. Um, but it has given us some, some, you know, it's given us a very funny reputation. But however, you have people, celebrities who are married and their, their marriages are working. And I think that it should be encouraged. If we talk about growth in Nollywood, it shouldn't just be financial and the quality of films that we make. What, what about, you know, what about ourselves as human beings, how we fare, how we carry on? A lot of people look up to entertainers, you know, and they see us as role models. And they are hoping that we make the right decisions because a lot of people want to be like you and I. And how we live our lives, not like I have to live my life, you know, to make you happy because you're not wearing my shoes, you don't know where it pinches, meaning you don't know the reason I do the things that I do. I accept the things that I accept, you don't know. You can just judge from the outside. But however, I am a role model to a lot of people. And if I get to marry an actress and it goes well, which I hope it will, if that's my fate, I would have encouraged the coming generation of young people who would see young men and women that they fancy and go like, oh, Freddie Leonard and his spouse, who's an actress, got it right. Why can I not get it right? You know, so, but if we're more sincere, uh, with our intentions as we mingle and tango. <laughs> uh, it's either we don't even get into those marriages or when we get in, we fight very hard to make sure it works. Ah, oh, you're very wicked. Frederick, you're a very wicked person. You're very, and I'm like, what's going on? How? Have I even, I don't even know you, sir. That, how, why did you treat that girl that way? <sighs> Sir, it was, it was a movie. I know, it's just that you played the character so well, man. <laughs> you know? So it comes out very strong. But then it, again, it's a compliment. But it also means that I connected with the emotions of the watching audience and I suspended their reality. I made believability happen and I, I, I pulled them into my world. So. You know, so when they see you, they forget it was a movie and, and then they give you that compliment that way. Because they're saying it, it's strong, but then they're smiling at the same time, you know? <laughs> What creative process, man? If I say I don't have a process now, it looks like I'm making, I don't have a process. The only process I know is that, look, I am in this world at my age, I should take everything that I do seriously. So you give me a movie script or you get me a project or a contract in Abuja, I take it seriously. That's my process. I, I, it's, it's a serious job. If I have to sleep at 4 a.m., you know, burning my midnight candle to get it right, I, I do. Look, sometimes our priorities are misplaced. No matter how serious or unserious you are with life, you find that there are certain things that you have paid attention to without you even knowing because you really wanted those things. So when are you going to begin to want the things that matter and give you the attention that it deserves? So this job falls under the category of things that matter to me and I give it my all. So that's my process. Um, in my 20s, I, I painted a picture of a great man that I wanted to be. It's a sketch in my head. And every day I woke up, I walked towards becoming every part of that sketch. And I'm here as a man thinking in his heart. So he's here. I, I, I see great things for myself. I think great of myself. I'm very self-aware. <laughs> um, so, but I also understand that I have to put in the work. It's not enough to just uh, sit down and, 
and wish. You know, uh, well, that would be wishful thinking. That would be you building castles in the air. Uh, so people call me great, but I call myself work in progress. You know, this, this journey is, is almost endless. But like I said earlier, even as I journey on, I'm thankful for every, for every win, for every blessing. Very thankful.